What I'm noticing both from people who have watched 30 Days and emailed me afterwards and people who are just emailing me randomly, you all have the same top kind of reoccurring problems that need troubleshooting. And one of them that I, the biggest one that I hear from people about is that they're still having trouble with their macro shots. Even after hearing me on three days or 30 days or at WPPI or reading my books or whatever, it's just not getting there. You're missing that extra little something. So what I have noticed with people who are still having trouble with your macro photography, a lot of those people have the same things in common. Most people are not choosing uh, the right f-stop, right? I had a call for images for today for live critique. You're going to see some in just a little bit. And got a couple of ring shots that were shot at 3.5 and f4. And people are saying, I don't understand why the entire ring isn't in focus. It's because, and I've said this before, but sometimes it, it takes a few times of repeating for it to really click. You can't shoot a ring at f4 and expect the entire ring to be in focus. You're working with a macro lens. Because therefore, with the magnification of the macro lens, your depth of field is very, very, very minimal. And at f4, it is a sliver. So if you're having trouble with your rings being completely in focus, try f9, f11, f16. You need to make sure that you are choosing the correct f-stop with a macro lens to allow your whole ring to be in focus. People are not being careful with their backgrounds. Uh, there'll be a person standing in the background, or there'll be something that they sort of put in the background to be a background element, but it's either too close, and then you can see what it is too much, or it's too far away, and then it becomes too indistinct. And if you're still struggling with your background, just try moving it around. Go home, take your own jewelry off, set it on something, shoot it, and close, move your background in, and then move your background further away, and see what the relationship between the foreground and background does when you start moving it around, shooting a macro lens. Same thing with your foreground. If you're going to put something in the foreground of the image to sort of muddy up the frame a little bit, you have to be very careful with not only how far is that from your lens, but how far is that from your actual subject. And I can't give you a spreadsheet for this one. There is no mathematical equation for your lens should be x distance from your foreground, which should be x distance from your subject, which should be x distance from your background. You just have to use your own trial and error to get it exactly where you want it to be. A lot of people are not being careful with their shutter speed. They're using a shutter speed that's too low to hand, help, to hand hold with your macro lens. I'll see people send things in that are shot at like a 25th of a second with a 105 millimeter macro. Well, with that focal length, even though your subject isn't moving, it's not going anywhere, you're liable to get camera shake. Maybe it's you know, out of focus, not because you're at the wrong f-stop, but because your shutter speed is too slow. And the other thing is your lighting. A lot of people are still struggling with how to light their ring shots. And I get a lot of people who are like, you know, I don't really know what to set my flash on, or I'm not really sure where to put my video light. 99% of the ring shots that I'm showing on my website and my blog are all natural light. And it is a super simple setup where I'm literally just trying to find a window or an open door um, that is about, it will, we'll do a little thing here. If this is the window, right? I'm probably here. So if that's the window, I'm going to put my ring here, and I'm going to be here. We're super close. And now I'm trying to diffuse the light from the window. I'll want to pull a shear or have something over it. I'm not looking for a super bright beam of sun, unless that's what I'm going for. I just need a soft light source that's fairly close to the light source itself. So to show you a few examples, if this is what you're struggling with, let's uh, talk about it. This is a client's ring. Uh, they had a paper cut, kind of a laser paper cut wedding invitation that opened outwards. So I took the invitation and I set it down. Like this is the flat part of the invitation. And then it opens like a book. And so that's what's going on in here. It's sitting just in the light from the window, which is at my back. I'm at F16 right here with 105 millimeter Nikon macro. And just being very, very careful with the positioning of the ring with my setting choices. Now, I can shoot a ring at about an 80th or a 60th of a second without handshake with a macro lens. You're going to have to find for yourself how low you can go before your hands start shaking. So I suggest not figuring that out at a client's wedding, but doing it at home instead. And then just being very careful that my background is very dark here. This is just my assistant standing behind it. 
We wear all black for a lot of uh, reasons, and one of them, you know, humorously enough, is that she can act as a tiny little human backdrop. So she'll, poor thing, she'll stand behind the ring like this, like holding her pants out to the side, like, can't believe I'm doing this. But she's basically making me a backdrop. Hi, Sandra. I know she's watching.